We're in a series of messages called Getting Through What You're Going Through. If you have your bulletin, I want you to open them up to the middle. This is the fifth part of this series, Getting Through What You're Going Through. And today we're going to be talking about sanctification. Sanctification is a process by which God transforms us by and through trouble. God changes us. He makes us more like him through difficult days, weeks, months, years, and sometimes decades. Now, I want you to understand something right up front. You have to get this. If you don't get this, you won't get the rest of it. So fill this in. God's number one purpose in your life is to make you like Jesus. His purpose is to make you like Jesus. That is his number one priority with your life. You say, I I hear this quite a bit. I don't know what God wants me to do now. I don't know what God's purpose is for me, you know, next year when I do this. That's fine. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you right now, his overarching purpose for you is to make you like Jesus. You need to let that sink deep into your head and your heart. Because when you go through difficult times, troublesome times, when you go through challenges... You need to know that God is using those things to make you more like Jesus. When you understand that, even though not everything in life will make sense, you'll at least begin to trust God's larger purpose for your life a little bit more. Look what Paul said in Romans 8, 29. He said, from the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him and all along, he knew who would. So he decided that those who came to him should become like his son. I don't know everything that happened to me when I got saved. I'm still learning it. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still learning from what the Bible tells me. I I don't have all the answers yet, but I do know this. When I got saved, from that moment forward until I go home to heaven, God is trying to make me more like his son. And he's doing the same thing for you. When God decided to make the very first human beings, this is what he said in Genesis 1.26. It says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness. This has always been God's plan. He wants to make us like himself. Now, don't misunderstand me. He's not trying to make you like God, a God itself. You'll never be a God. You'll never be a little God. But God wants you to become like him. I know you've heard the phrase, Like father, like son. God, your heavenly father, wants you to become like him. So how does God make us more like him? It's a process called sanctification. A process called sanctification. That's the process God uses to make you more like Jesus. Now, if you're a believer, you are being sanctified, whether you're aware of it or not. He started that process in your life to make you more like Jesus, to make you more like Jesus' character, his qualities, his attitude, his behavior, his actions, what he chose to do, what he chose not to do. God is making you more like him. Now, the way God produces the characteristics in your life that are Christ-like many times is to put you in the exact opposite situation of the characteristic that he's trying to grow in your life. For example, Jesus is love, and God wants you to love like Jesus loved, unconditionally and selflessly. 
So you know how God's going to grow that, sanctify that characteristic in your life? God's going to put some not-so-easy-to-love people in your life. That's how he's going to make you more loving. How many of you like that? Not me. God just give it to me. He said, no, this is the way I work. How about joy? How does God produce joy in my life? By putting you in times of sadness. How does God teach us peace? He puts us in times of conflict. It's easy to be peaceful when everything's going your way. But if you're really going to become a person of peace, you're going to go through times of conflict and distress. How about patience? Where do we learn to be patient? By being forced to wait. We wait in lines. We wait at red lights. We wait for people or circumstances to change. We wait for an answer to prayer. And through all of that waiting, God is teaching us patience. He's trying to make us more like Christ. That's sanctification. Now, what does God use to make you more like Jesus? Well, let me give you a few things. Let me give you four things that God uses to make you more like Jesus. Things he uses to sanctify your life, to change you, to make you more like him. Number one, God uses the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God in you. When you get saved, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God comes into you. He lives in you. And it is the Holy Spirit who produces the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the self-control that, that you need to become more like Jesus. And the more we allow God's Spirit to control our lives, the more we're going to become like Jesus. A second thing that God uses is His Word. He uses the Bible. When we let God's truth into our minds, it transforms us. It changes us. The more we know God's word, the more we become like him. That's why you need to read the Bible. If you're a believer, you should read some of the Bible every day. You can read a few verses. You can read a chapter. If you want to get some of the smaller books, you can read a whole book. But you need to be reading the Bible every day. Every week on the back of your bulletin, it shows you what you need to read in order to read the Bible through in an entire year. And you say, well, pastor, I hadn't been doing that. I'm a little bit behind. No problem. Because you know what happens January 1st? We start all over again. Why don't you make this upcoming year a year where you say, a little bit at a time, by this time next year, I'm going to have read the entire Bible through, Old Testament, New Testament. God uses his word to transform us, to change us. Third, God uses other people. God uses people to give us support. He uses people to challenge us, to teach us to encourage us, to change us, and to make us more like Jesus. Sometimes he uses people full of compassion and love who gently help us become what God wants us to be. Have you ever had a person like that in your life? I mean, they were right there at the right time. They were full of love for you and acceptance for you, and they were compassionate, and they were helping you. I love it when God puts those people in our lives. He uses people like that to make us more like his son. At other times, however, <laughs> he puts people in our lives that are like coarse sandpaper. You ever had those people? You know what? We need both. We need both of those kinds of people in our lives to make us more like Jesus. And fourth, God uses problems, pressures, pain, and suffering. Ooh, all of a sudden the message got bummer. He uses problems, pressure, pain, and suffering to make you and me more like his son, Jesus Christ. Now, number four wouldn't be a way that I would choose. 
I don't prefer those things. But God lets them come anyhow. Paul wrote about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look what he said. We are pressed on every side by troubles. You ever felt like that? The whole world is caving in? Not just a little pressure here and a little pressure there, but everything. You just felt like the bottom is going to just drop out. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed or broken. We are perplexed. You ever felt that way? I, don't, I can't figure this out. Why did this happen with my family? How come I lost my job? I'm perplexed. Why, why did this happen? We're perplexed, but we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down. Now, Paul meant that literally. There were people in Paul's day who literally wanted to kill him, and they would have if they had the chance. Now, I don't know anybody that's trying to hunt me down, but sometimes we feel that way. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going through suffering. These bodies of ours constantly share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in us. Did you just hear what he said there? We go through these hard times so that the death of Jesus, it's sanctifying us, it's changing us so that the life of Jesus can be seen more in us. In other words, these things happen. God works through them to make us more like Jesus. And then he continues on. Paul said, this is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed each day. For our present troubles are quite small, and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us an immeasurably great glory that will last forever. So don't look at the troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over. But the joys will come last. They will last forever. This passage says that God uses every problem for a purpose. We are in the process of being sanctified, becoming more like Jesus, and God transforms us. He changes us by the troubles we go through. It doesn't matter where your troubles come from. They can come from Satan. Sometimes it's nothing but Satan getting all over you. The troubles can come because we made bad choices, wrong choices, Selfish choices. Maybe they come our way because of somebody else's sin, and we really were innocent, but we got all messed up because of what they did. Folks, God loves to turn crucifixions into resurrections, and He changes us through those tough times. Look what Paul said in Romans 8, 28 and 29. We know that God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. Paul says this, we know. We don't guess We don't pretend, we don't hope, he says, we know for sure. And this is what gives us confidence, even in the most difficult circumstances. Why? Because we know. It's not a hope, it's not a wish. We know. What do we know? We know that God causes everything to work together for good. Folks, there is nothing that God cannot and does not use for good in your life. He took the worst thing that ever happened, the the death of his son on a cross, and he used that for good. Out of the worst sin in the world, killing Jesus, came the salvation of the world. 
Now, there are many things in the world that are not good. There are a lot of things that happen in this world that are evil, wrong, hurtful. But God says, I can't even work through those things for good in your life. Romans chapter 5, Paul wrote this. We know that troubles produce patience, and patience produces character. Individually and by themselves, things that happen in your life can seem very bad. But when you let God work them out together for his plan for your life, then he can bring good out of it. And part of that is making you more like Jesus. He uses the up times. He uses the down times. He uses the joys and sorrows, the fears, the failures, the bad choices we make. Times we're treated unfairly. The growing times when we're on the mountaintops, those wonderful times, and the dry times in the valley. He uses all of it to make us more like Jesus. Look what he says in Romans 8, verse 17. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him also. Think about this. When Jesus was on this earth, Did he go through times when he was lonely? He absolutely did. Remember when he was praying in the garden and none of the disciples would even go with him right before his crucifixion? He said, won't you stay and pray with me? And they all fell asleep. There were times Jesus felt very lonely. So there are times in your life you're going to feel lonely too and God's going to use those times to make you more like Jesus. Did Jesus go through times when he was very tired and fatigued and worn out? You bet he did. And so will you. Did Jesus go through times when people disliked him and hated him and misunderstood him? Absolutely, he did. And so will will you. So will we. And God uses all of that to make us more like Jesus. Now, folks, if you've been following me at all, You ought to be able to answer this. God uses anything and everything, the good and the bad. He uses all things to make us more like Jesus. So how do we respond? In light of that truth, instead of a knee-jerk reaction How should we respond? Knowing that God is trying to sanctify us through everything that goes on in the world, whether it's his perfect will or not, he uses it. He doesn't waste anything. Let me give you a couple of things. First of all, when you're going through the process of being made more like Jesus, of being sanctified, you need to remember over and over again, remind yourself that God's plan is, is good. God's plan is good. It may not feel like it, but it is. Now, when you read your Bible through next year, okay, you're going to find this story in Genesis. You'll find it pretty quick, right there, first book of the Bible. You're going to find this story about Joseph. Joseph had 11 brothers that were jealous of him. So much so that they took Joseph and sold him into slavery. And he was taken to Egypt as a slave. He'd done nothing wrong to his family. He'd done nothing wrong to his brothers. But this bad thing happened to him. When he got to Egypt, he was accused of raping a woman something he didn't do, but he was accused of it, and he was thrown in jail in a country that he was unfamiliar with. The first 40 years of Joseph's life was like this. 
not the first four, the first 40 years of his life. But some of you know the rest of the story. Joseph was exactly where God could use him, that God could make him more like him and, and, and transform him and change him and prepare him to do what God had planned. And as a result, Joseph was elevated to be the second in command in Egypt. And because of that, he was in a position where he literally saved Egypt and he saved Israel from starving through the famine that came. It was incredible what God used him to do. About that time, his brother started waking up. Uh Uh-oh. We're in trouble. Joseph isn't just still alive. He's second under command of Pharaoh. And he just saved two nations. I think we better run. Now, I have to admit, if I'd been Joseph, I'd have rounded him up. I'd have let him have it a little bit at a time. His brothers were afraid he would kill them. But look at Genesis 50. This is Joseph speaking to his brothers. He said, you know what? You intended to harm me. You had it in for me. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So when you're going through a time of transformation, of sanctification, and things are tough and rough in your life, you need to remember, time out, time out. God is using this to change me, to make me more like him. When you're in pain, don't focus on the problems. Focus on God's plan. Focus on God's purpose. He's there with you. He wants to change you. He wants to make you more like him. Any of y'all ever seen a tapestry? I don't understand it. They take thread and they sew things and they do things and it's, you know. Well, the backside of a tapestry looks like this. It's just a bunch of loose strings, different colors, looks like a shag rug, right? Let's go back to the 60s. We've been there. It looks a mess. When we're going through hard times, and we don't remember that God's in charge and he has a plan, that's what we think life is like. We think, oh my gosh. But you need to remember what God's actually doing. So you turn to the front side, and you see this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful picture. That's what God's doing in your life, even though the backside of your life looks like a jumbled mess. So remember what God is doing. Secondly, you need to remember what God's doing ultimately in your life. Number two, you need to give thanks and rejoice. Give thanks and rejoice. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It doesn't say here that you need to say thank you for everything. It says thank God in everything. I I would never thank God for some of the evil that takes place in our world. That's ridiculous. But even in the hard times of life, even when I don't feel like it, I can still say, God, my heart's not in it, and this may sound superficial, But I'm going to thank you anyhow because I know you're God and I know I'm supposed to thank you. So God, thank you. You say, well, well, pastor, it's, it's not really from the heart. Isn't that like hypocritical? No, because the Bible says I'm supposed to do it. God, I thank you that I'm alive again. 
God, I thank you, I've got food again. You thank him and rejoice in him in the midst of your problems. Paul said this in Philippians 4.4, Rejoice in the Lord always. You see, folks, when we're in our circumstances, we get down and we say, I can't rejoice because I can't rejoice in my circumstances. You're not supposed to rejoice in your circumstances. You're supposed to rejoice in God, right? Don't you think God's a little bigger than your circumstances? Number three, when you're going through it, refuse to give up. James put it this way in Chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Let the process go on until your endurance is fully developed and you will find that you have become people of mature character with no weak spots. When you're going through a hard problem, you have a couple of choices. You can say, God, make this easy, or you can say, God, use this for good in my life. I can say, God, comfort me, or I can say, God, conform me. Make me more like you. That's what we need to pray. Don't give up. Let God work. Keep cooperating with the the process of sanctification that he's taking you through so he will continue to make you more like Jesus. Now, I want to show you a way that this works out in our lives. Okay, so let's watch this. How do you get through what you're going through? One of the ways is to go through the process of sanctification. Sanctification means God is trying to make you more like Jesus. And he uses all kinds of things in the world to do it. And he uses those things to chisel away the things that aren't like him to make you more like his son. I want you to think, what is it in my life that needs to be chiseled away? Or, what is it in my life that I realize now God is chiseling away? Or he's been chiseling for some time and I haven't given in. How is God sanctifying you, changing you, making you more like him. Then, will you give in? Will you submit? Will you accept? Will you say, God, I want you to do that in my life. you pray with me please father I want to thank you for our worship time this morning every week We gather together, you bless us. You speak to us, you encourage us as we praise you and sing songs that let you know that we love you and how blessed we are to be the recipient of your love for us. And this week, Lord, in your word, we learn that to get through what we're going through We need to remember all of us are being sanctified. All of us are being changed moment by moment, 
day by day to become more like you. Sometimes, God, we forget that. And we need a good reminder like we had today. And we need to agree with you. God, yes, I need to be changed. I need you to keep working and chiseling away those things in my life that aren't pleasing to you. I need you to let I need to let you to take control, Father, of my life again. I need to turn back to you. I need to run to you, not away from you. I need, Lord, that more consistent, deeper walk with you that I haven't had for a while. And, Lord, I pray this not only for us individually here today. I pray this for our church, Crossroads. Lord, you do the same thing with your body of believers crossroads as you do with us individually maybe there are some things you're trying to chisel away some things that need to be strengthened some ways we need to envelop your will and your love and your way and your purpose for our church holy spirit we can only do this through your power and your might God, take this message and sink it deep, deep down into our minds and into our hearts and into our souls and into our emotions. Let this message change us again. Now, Father, as we go into this time where we have a chance to respond in a variety of ways, I pray you'll bless that. Use it, Lord, to grow us. In Jesus' name we pray.